Pretty much. Let's go through it. So we have our external ear or pinna or oracle. Then we have our external auditory canal slash external acoustic meatus slash some word that means tube in here. That's going to hit my panic membrane or eardrum, which is connected to my three ossicles. So I have my malleus or hammers, the first, my incus or ambles, the second. My stapes is on this model here. And together, those are in the tympanic cavity or middle ear cavity. Then my cavity drains down my eustachian or pharyngotympanic or internal auditory tube. Then we have, this here is the inner ear or bony labyrinth, which has the cochlea here, the semicircular canals here, and the vestibule in between. So if I look, if I were to take off my stapes, it would be an oval window where this vibration enters the cochlea, and then there's a round window where the vibration is absorbed, coming out basically the cochlea. And all these structures would go through my vestibular cochlear nerve. Vestibular branch would go here, cochlear branch would go there. So then if I'm looking, my semicircular canals, there are three, so if I do them, this would be the anterior front, posterior or back, lateral or sideways. And then each one has an ampulla, which is the thick area, where they're sort of connected, and that would contain the crista ampullaris and the structures to detect dynamic motion. My vestibule has two bumps, these and these, which are the utricle and saccule. Those contain the autolyphs to measure static equilibrium. And then, that we're going to zoom in on over here. So in this model, oval window would be the A, that window would be the C, so in and out, basically. I can have my cochlea, semicircular canals, which are cool and saccule. So we're going to focus on the, this part first. So again, I have my anterior, posterior, lateral, semicircular canals. They have an ampulla, which is the bulb at the bottom, inside of which would be the crist ampullaris. Each of these is full of endolymph, as well as the utricle and saccule, and that's made and stored by the endolymphatic sac, which is over here. These two contain the autoliths, which determine static equilibrium. Over here, if I open up my cochlea, I can see the tubing inside that represent where the vibrations and the lymph would travel. So that's this, up close and personal. So let's zoom over to here. So these three things here represent these three things here. So this one's the scala vestibuli, or the vestibular duct, full of perilymph. That travels through the cochlea and also comes down here, the scala tympani, or tympanic duct, which is also perilymph. This little triangle is the cochlear duct or scala media, which contains endolymph. And this is the vestibular membrane, because it's pointing to the vestibular duct. This is the tectorial membrane, because it bends. And the basilar or basilar membrane is along the bottom here, where the stereocilia and the, the cells are anchored. So this vibrates, pushes this, this vibrates, pushes this fluid, which pushes this, which pushes them. Which sends an impulse down these nerves to spiral ganglion, eventually out to the cochlear nerve, the vestibular cochlear branch. And the oval window is pushing onto this, the round window is absorbing from that. I think that's all. Tongue? Um, tongue. Taste. Tongue. And taste. Let's do that. So on my tongue model, which I really don't particularly like much, so we have our bumps, which is the papilla, and the only bumps which are very clear on this model are these ones here, which are circumvallates, which are the double circle, and so the taste buds would be on the sides of those valleys on that. That's really all I can ask on that one. Okay. There you go.